One of the worst feelings is when you sit down to watch a video, click on it, and it has insanely bad audio. You can't hear what anybody says, it's too quiet or just low quality. But your job as a video editor is to never let this happen. Yes, there are sound designers and audio engineers out there, but being an editor means that you know a little bit about everything. So today I will show you a simple way to deal with voiceovers and turn low quality audio into enjoyable sound. You can of course get much deeper into the topic of audio, but there are 5 protocols that I have and I use them depending on the situation. It was enough for me since I became a video editor, I never had to do anything else to make the voices better, but feel free to get into the topic deeper. Let's look at the first one. Protocol number one, worst audio into usable. This is kind of new, came with the AI revolution. If you have nothing like the worst audio out there, but want to make something out of it because there is no chance to re-recording. So then you can take your audio, which we have right here, and use this website. This is a website that Adobe created, which uses AI to help you enhance your files. And this can't fully save a worst audio and turn it into an amazing quality microphone, but it can help you a little bit. So this is what we have right here. This was the before one. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. And this is the new one. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. It's much better, it cleaned out the background. Now we still have other protocols to enhance this, but this is much better start. We turned our bad audio into usable one. Protocol number two, one-sided audio. You may have heard this recording have audio only on the left side. And maybe there are other voiceovers that you don't want to sound on one side, but it's on one side, so what can we do? First of all, we can click on the audio track and just convert it to mono. This is one type, but if you want to keep it stereo, you can come to the mixer. This shows where the sound is. If you click on it, it turns gray and you disabled it. So now if you listen, this is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. It's now in the middle. Nice. Keep in mind that this is A1 audio 1 and this is A1 audio 1. If you have A2, then here's A2. So all the channels are in order. And you can also come to the Fairlight and edit audio here. This is why DaVinci Resolve is so great because there are different spaces for everything that we want to do. And this is the audio one. And as you see here, this is the pen. We turned this off. Let's go to protocol number three, recording right. If you still have a chance to change things before recording, try to make it perfect so you don't have to deal with it later. Choose the best microphone you have. If you don't have a dedicated one, it will probably be your phone. And it's okay to use your phone. Figure out your microphone's range. Usually the closer the better, but don't go too extreme. This is the easiest to test. Go a little bit closer to the microphone. Go a little bit further from the microphone. You will find the best place. And if you have a professional microphone, you can use a puff filter so you don't spit into the microphone. Because when I don't have a puff filter, this is pop, pop, pop. You hear? It's, it's popping. It's, it's very bad to hear. But if I have a puff filter on, there is no more pop. There is no more peas. And after you record it with your external microphone and you have your footage here and your voice here, you want to make it sync because right now it's, it's not in sync. First things first, we turn it off the pen. DaVinci Resolve makes this so easy to sync. You just have to select them all, right click on it, auto line clips based on waveform. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you, something happened and I couldn't align these clips by using software. So now what we can do is just zoom in really really far and just try to match these audio wavelengths let me show you how to sync your audio now it's nice so what we can do to get rid of the bad microphone is right click on this and unlink the clips and now you can move them without moving the other one as well so if we have this we can delete the old audio and now if we check it out let me show you how to sync your audio it now has a nice microphone. What we can do is just select them, right click and link clips. And now if you cut, it cuts both of them. And it's still synced. Let's go to protocol number 4, boosting the recording. If you are done with recording and you have a usable audio, you can boost it to sound better. This is where you can watch a million tutorials on how to do this, how to do that, but I do one thing consistently. I do EQ. What is EQ? Every microphone has bad ranges, where it sounds pretty bad and we want to get rid of them and we use EQ for that. So we can come to the Fairlight tab and just select in, 
point for the audio that you want to change and the out point for the audio that you want to change. This is not a necessary option, but because we want to always hear what we change, it would be so much easier if we turn a loop because we have a so small recording, like a 4 second recording. If you have a 10 minute video, you don't have to do this, you start play and it will play throughout the 10 minutes. But because I have 4 second audio, I have to repeat it, so when I edit, I don't always have to start it over and over and over again by manually. It will start again automatically. So now we can double click on the EQ. Remember, if you one click, it turns it off. So we want to double click it and this is what we get. Right here we see different points. Band 2 is here, band 3 is here, band 4 is here, band 5 is here. Band 6 is turned off, but we can turn it on. And band 1 is turned off, but we can turn it on. There are a lot of different things that we can do with EQ, but I just want to show you one thing. And for that one thing, we need a point which looks like this. And if we move this, you see, we boost different frequencies. Let me show you. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. It's pretty bad, right? So what we want to do is want to make the sound of it the highest that we can. You see, gain is plus 20, the maximum. But it's too wide right here. We see many frequencies and not just one. So we can pull the Q factor to the maximum, so it only looks at a tiny bit of range. And now if we play it... This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. And we're boosting the sound, we can hear out the bad frequencies. So now let's search for one bad frequency. The voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make. Ooh, this sounds pretty insanely bad. We found one, one, two, three. And now we can put the gain and remove this frequency. Around minus eight is nice. And we can do this with the other ones. So let's switch it to this. Bring the Q factor to the maximum and just search for a frequency. Better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works. This is insanely bad, so let's get rid of this as well. This is good. Q factor is up. Let's search for something. And how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show and now we can check without it and with it. So this is a without it. How it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. And now we can also play with it and just uh, don't use this as a remover, but use this as a booster and boost the bass of our sound and things like that. But I don't really care about that. Of course, I sometimes do that. But right now I want to show you the essential stuff, the stuff that you need every single day and just puts you apart from other editors because many of the other editors don't do this. They just pull in the sound and they just edit right away. Don't EQ their thing. And now we got to the protocol number five, getting the levels right. If you have a clean, good quality recording, you still have to adjust the sound levels. Doesn't matter if you have the best recording, if it's quiet, people won't hear it. This is where we have to use the mixer. You can use it in the edit tab as well, or you can use it in the Fairlight tab. And if you play our sound, this is a voice sample to show how it... We see what loudness does it hit. And we see that it's around minus 10 and minus 5, which is actually great. Maybe a little loud works, because and how it can help. We see some red right here. So you can even pull it down a little. Help you to make better voices. This is a voice sample to show how it works and how it can help you to make better voices. But you have you want to hit around minus 10 and around minus 5 with your voices. And compared to that, my music is around minus 40 or minus 50, depending on the situation. If I want to have it with a greater impact and a greater emotional roller coaster with the music, I might bring it up a little bit, but usually I keep it around minus 40. And this is just my way to do audio, but recently what I found in videos is that you leave some amazing comments and I learn a lot from it. So don't hesitate right now as well, teach me some things about audio that I want to know, and if it's good enough, I will probably make a video about it. I also have insane keyboard shortcuts that you can download for free in the description. And if you want to save money on hard drives and have more storage for free, click on this video right here.